All right, I guess why don't we get started. Um, again, thanks for everybody for coming. Um, this is our Community Mitigation Fund uh, Regional Agency Grant uh, Workshop. Um, so um, just a few housekeeping uh, items before we get started. Uh, first is that we are recording this, um, uh, this meeting so that we can post it up on our website if anyone wants to refer to it later when they're filling out applications or whatever, it will be up there on our website for people to take a look at. Um, and so my name is Joe Delaney. I'm uh, the chief of the Division of Community Affairs here at the Gaming Commission. And I'm joined uh, by Mary Thurlow, who's our senior program manager, and by Lily Wallace, who's our program manager. And, um, you know, we are, we are it. We are the whole community mitigation fund. So uh, uh, anytime uh, you're dealing with us, you'll be dealing with uh, one of the three of us. So um, in this, uh, today we we're gonna go through a presentation, a, a PowerPoint. Uh, we will stop a couple of times for questions and answers. Um, if you do have any questions as we're going through the uh, presentation itself, we would ask that you can just use the chat function at the, uh, at the bottom of your uh, screen. If you scroll down there, you'll see it, it'll appear and you can uh, type any questions you have in there. Um, you can also ask questions when we do break for the, for the Q and A. Um, so if, and also if you, we would ask that you uh, please stay muted uh, during the presentation. Um, I don't think we have anybody who's on the phone, so that's good. Um, and uh, also the, uh, the deck, the, the PowerPoint deck that we'll be going through today, we will be posting that uh, up on our website uh, probably today or tomorrow. And uh, so that'll be available to you if you wanna take a look at it. So what we're gonna do today, uh, firstly, is uh, we've made some major uh, changes to the Community Mitigation Fund program for this year. So first thing is we're gonna go over what's new for this year. Um, and once we do that, we will then walk through uh, the application process a little bit for you, uh, give you some ideas of, of what that looks like and what we're looking to see. And then uh, lastly, we will, uh, we will walk you through our, uh, the Mass Gaming Commission website a bit, just so you can find uh, the Community Mitigation Fund page and find the resources that you might need to uh, help you fill out your applications. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and, uh, and get the presentation started. Okay. All right, so jumping right in. So what's new uh, for 2025? Uh, the, the first thing is we, we have sort of revamped the whole program into this kind of, we're calling a two-tiered uh, uh, grant. The first is a, the municipal block grant. And we had two workshops last week on that. And of course that is just for uh, the municipalities that are eligible to get uh, community mitigation funds. And the second piece of it is the regional agency grant, which is the topic of this, uh, uh, presentation uh, today. So one of the things that uh, we had a number of meetings uh, with our advisory committees and with stakeholders and uh, all through the summer had a, had a bunch of meetings and, and talked to a lot of people. And one of the things that uh, everybody had asked was if we could provide better uh, project guidance. So in our uh, guidelines this year, um, what we did was we created within each grant category, you'll see a, a few different things. One is a listing of those impacts, casino related impacts that we agree uh, are likely to be caused uh, by the, the gaming establishments. The second piece is we've identified the types of projects that might be eligible for funding that would address those uh, uh, agreed upon impacts. And then the third thing that we did in each one of these is uh, identify some ineligible items. Um, over the last couple of years, we've had some projects come in that really uh, weren't eligible for funding. These are things that, that, that normally should have been um, 
you know, paid for by a municipality and not from the community mitigation fund. So we've identified some of those as well. So I would encourage all of you to take a good look at the guidelines uh, in the category that you, you'd be applying in and, and you know, look at some of those things that we've added. I believe everyone who has received this uh, uh, presentation or this in, uh, invitation, excuse me, uh, has will now has a copy of the guidelines. Those were attached to that invitation. So, um, you know, you can open those up and save them and, uh, you know, refer to them as you're filling out your, your uh, applications. And then the next item is administrative costs. We are allowing um, administrative costs to be charged against the grant up to seven and a half percent of the grant amount um, and with a cap of $50,000. So um, I know on the workforce grants, uh, we did always allow administrative costs, uh, but we have extended that out now to uh, other grant categories. Uh, the next new item is funding for regional planning agencies. This is one of the topics we'll be delving into uh, more deeply a little bit later. Um, so up to $250,000 is available for the regional planning agencies associated with each gaming establishment. So uh, again, we will talk about that in more detail uh, in a few slides. And then lastly is a conversion to a fiscal year. We had always done this as a calendar year, uh, but you know the, the Gaming Commission operates on a fiscal year, all of the state agencies operate on the same fiscal year, and most of our communities operate on the same fiscal year. So we thought we would bring this in line with um, with uh, you know what what everyone else is doing. So on the next item, you know who is eligible for these regional agency grants? So if we go back to the law that created uh, that allowed the casinos in Massachusetts, which is Mass General Law Chapter Twenty Three K, um, in there they identify who is eligible for community mitigation funds. So they talk about local and regional education, transportation, infrastructure, housing, environmental, public safety, and they spe spell out specifically the, the, the district attorney's offices, uh, then to talk about police, fire, and emergency services. So as you can see, that's a pretty broad swath of uh, things that could be funded under uh, the community mitigation fund. Now, for this year, and you'll see in our guidelines uh, that we have focused on three areas. These are the regional planning efforts, which we just mentioned, um, regional public safety, and uh, that is something that we have been doing for a number of years now, um, but hoping to get uh, some more interest in that. And then regional workforce uh, education programs. And again, we've been doing these workforce programs uh, for a number of years now and have proposed to continue that. Um, so now, given that, with that said, those three areas are our focus. Of course, if someone came in in one of those other areas that we mentioned, I'll go back to this previous one where we talked about the you know, transportation, infrastructure, housing, environmental, and so on, um, someone could certainly come in and apply for that. Um, since it's not the focus of our efforts this year, if there is any uh, one that comes in for, the, for any of funding outside of those three categories that we talked about, we really would like those folks to contact us ahead of time so that we can have a conversation about uh, what it is that they're proposing and, um, you know, is it eligible? Uh, you know, what are the impacts of the casino? All of those kinds of things. Now, with that all said, private and nonprofit organizations are not eligible for direct funding. So, um, you know, last year we did have a, a nonprofit come in looking for some money and, and we just simply can't, uh, 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 we can't grant money directly to a nonprofit. Now also nonprofits may be, uh, can be funded if a, if a regional agency, a state agency comes in and wants to use a nonprofit as a, as a subcontractor or something, that is a possibility, but uh, private and nonprofits are not eligible you know, directly to apply for these funds. So what hasn't changed here? Um, the basic tenet of our program is that each applicant has to identify a casino related impact. You know, that, that's job one. And once 
the, that casino impact is identified, the project that you are proposing has to mitigate that particular impact. Um, that has always been the case with this program. And, it, and as long as the law stays as it is, that will always be the case with this program. So, so what is different for this year uh, with respect to that? How to determine the casino related impact. In, in years past, we would uh, say to a community or, or an agency, tell us what your impact is, provide us some documentation that shows that that really is an impact. You know, we want, we want hard numbers or something that, that really demonstrates that that is an impact and then tell us what you're gonna to do to, to fix that. Uh, one of the things our applicants have had a difficult time doing is actually making that nexus between an impact and the casino. So what we did this year, and I mentioned this a little bit before uh, in brief, but we went through all of our research that we've done. We went through earlier applications. We did just research on the internet and, and a whole bunch of other things. We hired a consultant to help us look at uh, what other uh, jurisdictions are doing with respect to uh, impacts. And in our guidelines, we now say in each category that there are certain things that we recognize as impacts of the casino. So when you're putting together an application, if you pick one of those things that we have predetermined to be an impact of the casino, that's all you need to do. You need to pick that impact. And then of course you need to show us what your project is, is doing that will address that impact. But we're trying to make it um, simple to, to, to find an impact that, that you can um, then address. Now, if you don't use one of those impacts that's in our guidelines or in any of these research studies, you will then have to go to uh, in a whole lot more detail on what that impact is and how it, um, you know, how it uh, is connected to the casino and how you're gonna address that. So with that, I'm gonna, we'll stop here for some questions. So let me take down my uh, PowerPoint and let's see. Okay, uh, we don't have anything in the chat yet. Does anybody have any questions that um, they would like us to answer at this point? No? We've got a quiet group here today. Oh, Eric, yes. Uh, just a quick uh, note of appreciation. We do appreciate the fact that you have segregated out the regional efforts and have identified the monies that could be made available as long as we meet the criteria. So we just appreciate as an RPA um, being recognized that way. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, we've got one question that's popped up in the chat. Uh, can you define what you mean by administrative costs that are allowed? So, um, you know, primarily we're looking at this as, you know, the people who are actually administering these grants, the people who are doing the quarterly reports, uh, who are putting together the payment requests and so on, you know, the time that they spend doing that can be charged against the grant, uh, essentially. Um, so it's, it's not if, you know, if someone is working, um, you know, if some money goes to the, um, you know, to, to a, a, a DA's office and you know that money is earmarked to help offset salaries you know that that's already there but it's for the, really for the person who's doing the administrative work to to kind of keep everything to keep everything running with the grant okay any other uh, questions no okay I will um all right, I'll go back to sharing my screen on our um, slideshow. Okay. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the regional uh, planning grants. Uh, again, we mentioned this earlier that uh, up to $250,000 uh, can be granted to uh, the regional planning agencies uh, for projects that address regional impacts associated uh, with the gaming establishments. So in this case, there are just, there are three regional planning agencies that are eligible for these funds, which are the Metropolitan Area Planning Council for 
uh, region A, which is the uh, Encore uh, region. Uh, the Southeast Regional Planning and Economic Development District, that's for the area around the Plain Ridge Park facility. And then uh, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, which is for region B, which is the um, area around uh, MGM. And I guess just on, on these, again, we're really looking for regional type projects. I think if there's a project that really only affects one community, um, probably that community should be coming in for a grant under their own um, uh, community mitigation fund application. So again, these are things that we're, we're looking at as being uh, sort of regional in nature um, uh, that, that, you know, that covers sort of more than one of one community in, in the area. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lily and she's going to talk about the public safety grants and the workforce grants. Yeah, so the other two application categories we have for this regional grant are going to be for public safety grants and workforce. So for public safety grants, we have historically received these grants before from the district attorney's office, from um, the sheriff's office for all of the regions. And so we're really looking to um, expand that as we've seen some real successes, particularly in Hampton County with um, their use of these funds. So in FY25, we're going to allow for up to $100,000 for these grants. And these grants will be, um, you know, if there is some other spectacular project that you have, um, please come and talk with us. We've had some lovely meetings with both the regional planning agencies and some of our regional public safety um, folks that have come in and had some uh, conversations on how they'd like to use these monies. Uh, and I think it's been really um, eye-opening of some of the great projects that are, are underway. So if you are uh, confused or concerned, if you are an eligible regional public safety agency, make sure to reach out. Um, again, this is not for nonprofits. This is governmental agencies only. Um, and with the expansion of these funds, there will be um, some requirements. Joe, if you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, just before we go there, Lily, I just wanted to add in, you know, we did cap this for the DA's offices at $100,000. Um, you know, we've been funding Hamden for the last several years, and that's been at about, I think, at about $75,000, which seems to be about right. Um, we just wanted to make sure we gave the DA's offices some idea of, you know, what kind of expenditures we were looking at. And, um, you know, especially for those DA's offices that have not participated before, we just wanted to give you some idea of, you know, the sort of the maximum we were looking at. If the needs are greater than that, you know, it's something that we could probably visit down the road, um, you know, as, as these projects come in. Joe. Uh, and so with, you know, new monies come new responsibilities. So we are going to require that there is some expansion of uh, recording of the different cases that you're dealing with. Um, this will go into a little bit more detail with the actual grants if you are granted, but you can see below, these are some of the different cases um, and categories that the commission is particularly interested in um, and kind of trying to do some more tracking around this in relation to the casinos. So um, again, really, if you're looking for uh, one of these grants and you're not you know, outlined pretty directly as a district attorney's office, um, please reach out to Mary and Joe and myself so we can just make sure that you're applying for this the correct way. Um, and I think that's about it for public safety. Okay. Unless you have anything else. And then, oh, and I will say uh, again, when uh, later in the point in this, slideshow, we're going to walk through the um, website where we have all of our previous grants listed. So you can look at what some of the other regional public safety agencies have done that have been successful in their applications. Um, but on to regional workforce. Workforce is pretty much the same as it has always been for our folks that are on the call that have previously applied for it. It does require a consortium application. Um, and historically, we've seen um, Holyoke Community College come in in the West, as well as Springfield Technical Community College and Mass Hire and a bunch of different um, subcontractors in the East. So we really want to focus on a holistic approach to workforce development. But again, if you have any questions and you have not previously applied, applied for this category, please feel free to reach out to the team and we can definitely talk through your application and your ideas. Uh, we did increase the regions. So each one is now getting uh, 750 instead of 500. So we are hoping that with that funding, we'll see a proportional expansion of the programs that are currently offered or things that you are looking to expand into. Uh, and we historically have only given out one grant per region. So 
Um, that is really, we'd love to see people work together. And that is why we require consortium application on those. Okay, I think we'll, with this, we'll turn it over to Mary, who will walk through the application process a little bit. You there, Mary? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're going to see a common theme throughout the program uh, today. And I'm just going to reiterate some of these on this one page because they are important. That the guideline, that everyone read the guidelines before filling out your application. And <clears throat> this is really critical to helping you understand and make sure that you're applying in the correct format and the correct type of application. We also want to make sure that please, by 11.59 p.m. on January 31st, submit your application. Now, in the event that you are waiting for a study from someone to put into your application and you do not receive it, file your application and just state in it that you are waiting for a piece from somewhere. But if you don't submit it, the application by January 31st, you're not going to be able to be able to apply for this year. Yeah, um, Mary, and just to, just to add on to that, but you know that is the only statutory deadline that we have in in the law. It says that applications have to be in before February 1st. So we give you every minute possible, but if they come in on February 1st or later, we we have to reject. Um, applications also need to be signed by a CEO or uh, someone with signatory authority um, who can, uh, who has the authority to commit funds on behalf of the agency. Okay, and here, this is pretty rudimentary, but this is really critical. Um, we need a grant manager assigned to each application that grant manager should be picked with the idea that they'll be able to follow this project through to the end or and has the capacity to do the quarterly reporting and other obligations of the contract. Uh, please be sure to update the commission if, uh, if there's a change in management of the grants. It's really critical that we have contact information um, throughout the process. <clears throat> Next, yep. Okay, so on here, you'll see that there's three separate categories. We want to, um, and we, a description. So please provide a description that will distinguish your application from others. Uh, an example, if you could say that <clears throat> in the description, I want a regional traffic study on route XYZ to street XYZ, which is a feeder road to the casino, that is a good description. Do not say application of the community mitigation fund or something, you know, we, we really want something that will distinguish your application from others because it is going into a database and it'll go under your, under your entity's name and the next line will be what the description is. So it's really critical that they're uh, well described. Next. Um, and on this one, I, I just want to add a couple things on this one, uh, Mary. The, yep. um, so on some of these grants, you know, an, an individual agency may have more than one uh, grant uh, project, I should say, under their grant. Um, I think on the public safety ones, those would mostly be just a single project um, as of the workforce development ones. But I'm more thinking in the regional planning where an agency could come in and, and maybe ask for uh, two or even three different projects that would total um, their grant amount. Um, so in here, uh, you know, you can add lines into this budget summary, uh, and and you can you know add you so you can have like sort of three different projects under regional planning, which would each have an individual name and an individual description. So um, so these are expandable if uh, if need be. And then here is the all important uh, signature line. And again, this just has to be signed by someone who has the authority to commit funds on behalf of the agency. 
Okay, and I think at this point we'll go over to Lily, who will go through uh, some of the more details of, of, of the application. And so the application can all be found on combis and online, and we'll be walking through where you can find that later. But um, as you can see, we've just been cutting out some of the, the key pieces to walk you through. So for all three applications, you're going to see some similarities. And those are, you know, the, the main crux of the application. The meat of your application is your impact and your mitigation. So under each of these categories, we have identified impacts um, that we have determined through different commission and external research. Uh, that, you know, if you decide that you would like to do something to, you know, in relation to this positive impact to, um, for instance, capitalize on the fact that the gaming establishment has attracted a large group of patrons and their employees to establishments that wouldn't otherwise be present in the area. So say you want to take advantage of this aspect and do a large marketing uh, study for that area. Um, you would just take this piece and you are welcome to copy and paste it directly from the guidelines. We're trying to make this as easy as possible if you're using um, impacts we've already established. So you can just pop that right in there and say that's what your uh, impact is. And feel free to, you know, add a sentence or two just about how it um, impacts your area particularly. Uh, and then that's enough. Uh, as Joe mentioned earlier, if you do not use one of the impacts that we have identified, you're going to have to do a little bit more legwork. You will have to provide us a little bit more of a breakout of some research or relevant information that is related to the impact that you are trying to prove exists. Um, and that is uh, a piece that you can look more into detail in our guidelines. So once you have filled out piece one about our, the impact, you're going to fill out piece two, which is how your project is going to address that impact and how it's going to mitigate that impact. So section two, while it looks like a tiny box for the purpose of this slideshow, will be a pretty big box on your application. So use this opportunity to kind of give us a, a pretty detailed breakdown of everything. This is where you're going to include any kinds of attachments, of scopes, of anything that you've done so far. Um, we should be able to read this and have a very good idea of what you're doing um, and make sure that you include in this piece any, you know, very clear action items or products that you're hoping to um, develop as a part of this mitigation. So this next piece is going to kind of uh, be a line item version of section two. So this is going to be your budget. Um, I know a lot of folks do have external budgets that come from other agencies, and unfortunately in this situation, please see attached will not work uh, on our end. So you are going to need to go through and fully fill out your budget. The way that our database works is that we go through your applications and we insert every line item, and then we take your uh, applications out line item by line item, and that is how we determine funding. So for instance, if I am a... Um, district attorney's office and I'm looking for funding for personnel, I would put my first line item as 200 hours of, you know, this person's time at 20 hours or at $20 an hour. And then that would be my budget so that I, as the reviewer, know exactly what that money is, particularly around salaries, around who that is going to. And then my next line item under that could be, you know, for instance, pens and pencils related to the, the increased work that that one individual is going to have to do. Sometimes you need a lot of pencils. So each of these pieces should be discrete in what they're describing um, so that we can have a good understanding of each of the pieces. So for regional planning, and uh, jo as Joe had mentioned earlier, you might have multiple projects. Each of those projects will have their own individual section one, section two, and budget you'll be able to just copy and paste over the sheet that is currently online. Um, but for everyone, feel free to attach any kind of scopes or outside budgets that you have, any attachments, but this piece must be filled out. So that's uh, just an important piece that we wanna make sure. Again, like please see attached is unfortunately not appropriate for this section. Um, and Joe, I don't know if you have any other pieces you wanted to touch on for their budgets. Uh, nope. Oh, I don't think so. Um, and I'll take this last one um, here before we walk you through the website. Just again, on your application submission, um, you know, it says here applications must be submitted via combis or emailed to mgccmf at massgaming.gov. You do not need to submit to combis at all. You can submit directly to our uh, email at that email address. 
Uh, we encourage you to do that. Um, you, you can submit through combines if you really want. Um, you know, we'll go in there on the morning of February 1st and check and see if anybody filed that way. But we, last year, we got rid of uh, the need for combines. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. We still are required to work with combines, but, but we, we came up with a workaround to make it easier for our applicants to just file directly with us. Uh, we still deal with combines, but you do not. And again, January 31st at 11.59 p.m. Um, if you do not uh, submit by then, we will, will not accept your application. Um, so we're asking that you submit this as one Word document, uh, you know, integrate any uh, attachments or whatever it is that you have in there if you, if you can. Um, you know, if you're having problems with that or whatever the case may be, please feel free to reach out to us. There's Mary's um, email address on this, but um, uh, the PowerPoint here, uh, which will be up on our website, it's got all of our uh, contact information in there. So uh, with that, before we stop for questions one more time, it's gonna have Lily walk through the website so you can find uh, what you, I will stop sharing here, okay. Okay, Lily, uh, gonna walk us through the, the website. Yep, give me one second, Joe, you just yep. knocked me off, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so this is our wonderful website. Um, just a quick point, um, our website is massgaming.com, not massgaming.gov, as you might assume. So just to make sure if you are looking for it, that could be the issue. Um, if you go to the About section and you just scroll down, you'll find a tab for the Community Mitigation Fund. This is our overview um, of our program, so you'll be able to find some of the basic information, including the due date and the combines posting, as well as um, after we get done with this, uh, all of the trainings will be, uh, the recordings will be posted here, as well as the slideshows. Um, so some of the pieces you're going to need are in this left rail. So the first piece is the application guidelines. As we tried to really hit on today, please read the guidelines. We all spent a very long time working on them, and they have a lot of detail uh, and a lot of pieces that you will need in order to have a successful application. So you'll be able to find those here. Another piece that we are really trying to get folks to look at this year is all of the other wonderful resources that we have on all of these topics. You know, we want to receive wonderful applications. So we have tried to really give you all the tools that you need to succeed. So if you look down here, we have compiled a list of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission's own research agenda. We have the top research agenda in the country. So I promise there's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, and then specifically within that community engaged research. So you can see some of the projects that are happening across the state in relation to different communities. Uh, as Joe mentioned earlier, we also worked with a outside contractor called Grio, and we produced these slides. One is specifically about economic impacts of the casino, one specifically on public safety, and one specifically on priority population. There's a lot of good information in these that could really help your applications, depending on what you're looking for. And then um, we also have some maps down here for anyone looking to do anything around transportation planning. So you can feel free to look through all of these. Again, a lot of wonderful resources available to help strengthen your application. And then if you go back over here on the left rail, you can find all of the forms relevant to your application. So. Uh, if you go through here, make sure you are clicking the regional FY 2025 application form and waiver if you're applying for a waiver, uh, not the municipal ones. Those will be a little bit more confusing, so just make sure you're clicking regional. Uh, and then just a note for our current grantees, if you're looking for forms like your budget forms or quarterly report forms, those are still going to be located here just on the bottom. Uh, the third a helpful resource that you could look to if you're trying to think about some projects that might be uh, Make, uh, might make sense for your application. We have a full archive of every award that we have given and every application we have seen. Uh, while having uh, previously funded a program doesn't mean that we'll fund it moving forward, or even if you copied and pasted it, we really like to take these on a case-by-case -case basis. So feel free to use some of these as inspiration. But again, if you have any questions, uh, you see that we have our contact information here on the side, uh, and you can feel free to reach out. Uh, this is, you know, a, a nice piece about this 
grant program is that we're able to be so collaborative. So we're happy to meet with anyone. I received two emails during this meeting actually to set up meetings. So um, happy to meet with everybody and anyone who has an idea and has something that they'd like to run by the team before the application deadline. All right, well, thank you, Lily. So at this point, um, we'll open back up for questions. I do see we've got one here in the chat. So why don't we start with that one? Um, it says a section in the guidelines mentions a negative impact on hospitality and entertainment industries. Uh, use the NAICS code to define. Um, you certainly could do that. Uh, we're just sort of generally talking in general terms on that. I, you know, I don't think we have to get that specific. I think we all, it's one of those things, I think you know it if you see it. Um, you know, if there's, you know, if it's hotels, if it's restaurants, if it's entertainment venues, if it's movie theaters, if, you know, I, th I think we all have a general idea what those things are. So I don't think we uh, need to get quite to that level of detail. Okay, and Alice Casey, I see your hand up. Hi, thanks for doing this. This is uh, so helpful. Uh, oh, so a question about eligibility. So it looks like um, a DA's office would fall under regional grant public safety. That seems like sort of the logical spot for it. However, yep. my question is, what about the other two regional grants? Are we disqualified if we come up with something creative for the planning or the workforce, or is that an option? So on the planning, it's only the regional planning agencies, the three that okay. were identified. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a pilot for this year. So we wanted to keep it sort of to a, a, a small kind of subset of folks. But mm -hmm. the workforce ones, again, those need th those are really kind of large scale uh, workforce training programs. Uh, you know, and again, it has to be a consortium. It has to be several groups working together. Like out, out west, mm -hmm. we have Polio Community College working with Springfield Technical Community College and the city of Springfield uh, to do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, same thing in the East. So, you know, theoretically you could apply for that, but you would have to certainly put together a, a if you look back and see what our previous folks have done, uh, you, you would have to put together a pretty robust group to, to kind of beat that group out, I would say. <laughs> so, um, so it wouldn't be, so we wouldn't both be like, it, there isn't the potential for both of us to get an award like that. If we came up with something similar where we were partnering with, you know, our local colleges on some level. You know, potentially we, we, we generally uh, set those up to do one per region. So, okay. so if we, if we got a second application in a given region, it would, it would then be competitive with the other application. But we'd we probably, would okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. Other questions? Nobody, anyone, anyone, Bueller? Um, okay, well, if there are no more questions, again, I wanna thank everybody for taking some time out of your day to, to, to go over this with us. Uh, we hope that it is helpful to you. Um, and again, we, um, encourage folks, if you have ideas for projects that you're not 100% sure on, or, um, you know, or you want to expand something that you had been doing previously, or whatever the case may be, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we will, we will try to, um, uh, to meet with everybody who wants to meet with us and to discuss all of these things. Uh, as usual, we do have some uh, vacations and things around the holidays, but, uh, um, you know, someone should be available uh, most of the time to answer questions and, uh, you know, hopefully help you guys do uh, better applications. And, um, you know, I guess we will, we will be working with all or many of you uh, over the next uh, weeks and months as we uh, pull this whole program together. So thanks for being here, and uh, I hope you all have uh, great holidays. Thank you.